recently posted a video featuring the brand new version 2 update to Topaz Photo AI. And I've since had numerous subscribers message me to say that their update isn't working properly because the Gigapixel upscaling tool doesn't work when they open the app as a plugin when using the usual filter menu in Photoshop. Now, this question raises two issues. Either I didn't properly explain how the Photoshop plugin works, or my good friends may just have skipped through the video and missed my explanation entirely. So today I'm going to show you exactly how to access Gigapixel Upscale tool in Photoshop, followed by a reminder of the platform features with a quick demo. Plus, I'm going to quickly show you how to set up a platform presets to make sure that you're working as quickly and as effectively as possible. Hi, I'm Ken Hatfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. So I've just brought this image in from my website into Photoshop and the first thing I'm going to do is keep my promise to show you how to upscale this using Topaz Photo AI. Let's just check on the size at the moment. The image size is in fact 8 inches by 6 inches, it's 300 dpi. So what we want to do there, let's assume that I've had a client come along and they want a large format of this, they want say 4 times that size, 32 inches by 24 inches. I can't do it in Photoshop, I lose the resolution, so the first place I'm going to seek to go is to my Topaz Photo AI. Normally you would come up here and go into the filter menu, and down here I've got Topaz Labs, and uh, you'll see Photo AI. I'm not going to press that because it ain't going to get me anywhere, because you will not find an option to use Gigapixel Upscaler in that menu. You need to come over to File, Automate, and then you've got two options. You've got Topaz Gigapixel AI. That's if, if you know for certain all you want to do is upscale. However, I would suggest you come into Photo AI. That gives you the option to upscale and a whole boatload of other tools there that you can use to improve this image should you need to do so. So it's already automatically upscaled it by 1.67 times. If you click on this little arrow here, it'll actually give you information about what that tab actually does. And that's good for all of these tools down here. It'll tell you what they do. So here we have uh, the size. Now you can look at different uh, sizes here. You can look at pixels, inches, and centimeters. So if we look at inches there, watch out here because it's gonna upscale in 72 pixels per inch. If we're gonna print that, we need to make sure that is at 300. Okay, so the size then comes down to 13.3 by 1002, which is still too small for what we need. What we need is four times. So we can upsize it to these sizes here. There's two, four, and then maximum here allows you to put your own dimensions in. If it's a peculiar size and you want to have it enlarged to a, a certain dimensions, you can actually click that and put your own size in. So I'm just going to put the four times because I know that's what I'm looking for. As you can see, it's going to be 32 by 24 inches there. Over here, we've got the AI models. Now, this is different resolutions that you can use. The standard high fidelity graphics and low resolution. We'll come to them in a minute. So the sliders here allow you to use minor denoise and, and minor de-blur on the image if you should choose to do so. And further down here, which I'm not going to go into in detail today, I've already done a video showing these, which I'm going to put a link to below as well. But there's a noise removal, sharpen, recovering faces. That has images with people in. And then preserving text, that simply allows allows you to get a better, sharper text when you use this particular tool. It sharpens up the text. These are the new tools that have just been added, which is the Adjust Lighting and the Colour Balance, uh, which are very useful. Again, go and see the other video. I'll tell you all about that. I'm going to concentrate today purely on Gigapixel. So here we've got this. This is the original image that we brought in and the resolution that it was there. And this is the larger image. This is at 32 by 24. Now these models here allow you to choose different resolution settings that have been suggested by the program. And I suggest you go through them and just kind of look, look at them one by one against the original image there. And there's graphics and then low resolution. One thing you'll notice up here, when I press graphics here, if you look at this area here, when I press graphics, it'll actually re-render. And that's something you're going to uh, allow a little bit of time for. I've got a very quick computer, a very quick processor. This is all real time. So you see how quickly my computer re-renders. So um, basically looking at that, I'm very happy with the low resolution there. I'll just make a little bit of the blur there. Just a little tiny bit of extra taking the blur out. It just gives a little bit more sharpness on the eye. 
and, and I'm happy to take that back into Photoshop. So you just take it back into Photoshop, it will come up huge and then you just need to squeeze that down and then you can have a look to see how you feel about that being printed. And that is beautiful. And if you go into just to check image, image size, and it's 32 inches by 24 at 300 dpi, which is fine. And that to me is ready to go to the printer. On many occasions, it doesn't just enlarge, it actually improves at the same time. If it finds any noise, it'll automatically get rid of that. And it's a tool that you can use on almost any photograph. And it's a remarkable application. I'm constantly amazed at just how useful and how good this is for my own personal use. So Topaz still have their special deal on at the moment, by the way. I have put a link below in the description. If you use that link and go to Topaz, and they're offering a $40 discount, which takes it down from, I think, $195 to $155, something like that. Well, it's only on till about the 22nd of September, when you've only got three or four days. But however, you can download it free of charge. You can try it before you buy it. So you've got two or three days where you can make your mind up whether this would be a useful tool for you. And it's certainly going to stay as a mainstay for my photo processing. So what I'd like to do now is to look at the presets, how you can set up Topaz Photo AI so that it suits your type of photography. And let's go to the presets menu by going to, this is a standalone app. And we go to the menu here and simply go to settings here. Now, I'm just going to go through from the top there, very simple settings. Forget about the processor, it is what it is. On your lens correction, it is enabled. I'll keep that enabled. And again, it tells you what the function is. It's just a tool for fixing distortions and vignetting, which I would leave that on. This one here is for your brush overlay. This is where you choose the size of your brush that will come in automatically. So you can have that at any size you like, and you can change the color that the brush will use when it's painting a mask. And then you can decide whether you close the images after saving. I leave them open because I may want to tweak them a wee bit. I like to, uh, to check them over before I wave them goodbye. Uh, autopilot here. An autopilot is the mainstay of Topaz Photo AI. Autopilot looks at your image the minute it's imported. It then decides what needs changing automatically, which you can change if you want to later. You're not forced to accept anything that it offers. You can change or alter or amend at any time. But these are the default settings. These are the things that you can change depending on your type of photography. This subject detection here, the default setting here, selects objects that are in focus. So it will automatically select focused images. The portrait there, it identifies and selects people that are in focus. Landscape, it detects land or, or water and then will deselect the sky. And finally, there's none which basically turns the subject detection off. I'm going to leave mine on default because sometimes I have people, sometimes don't have people, I have animals and I have some landscapes as well. If you're just doing like portraits, if it's all people, then you might want to change that to people only. So it immediately detects your particular subject. We move to upscale and resize. So the upscale and resize here is set to auto, and that means autopilot will decide what settings to use. However, you can, as a default setting for yourself, apply any of those models that we were looking at earlier. So it will come in automatically on high fidelity, standard graphics or low resolution. I'll leave it at automatic because it does a good job. You can also set the levels on the sliders here for minor denoise and uh, minor de-blur. On the removing noise, it's automatically set for me on re removing noise from any image that comes in with medium to high noise. You can change that so that you can have it high and above, severe, low, or always off. Medium and above does very nicely, thank you very much. And if you notice, that is for non-RAW files. This program works at its best for RAW files. So it's got a separate setting for RAW files as well. It's exactly the same thing. You, you set the program's functionality when you bring your image in. It'll automatically do what you tell it here when you bring any image in. Sharpen and blur. You choose which level you want it to act automatically. It can be a low amount of blur, medium amount of blur, or a high amount of blur. And again, the slider there for the strength of the model, you can use the slider 
and that just leave that on no i've just left that on normal and this optimization for high quality images it will actually look at the image and it will make a decision as to whether it applies noise reduction or blur reduction and you can then change that to have either one or the other or leave it for the program to correct the more prevalent issue and uh, again that's a really super tool as well so the face detection here if you look down the tabs here you can actually face detect all recognizable faces in the image images that are low quality within the photo the subject only that means that if you have a subject in the foreground of the image that's in focus and the others are not in focus behind it will only use the face recovery on the focused face and then of course there's none and then you can choose whether it's hair and neck just the hair or just the neck most of these tools i would just leave as they are and if you want to go back you can just reset everything to default using that the shortcuts obviously these are what you'd use as shortcuts in the program i'm not a big fan of shortcuts certainly not when i'm doing a tutorial i think it's far easier to show people a long way around because it'll remember that rather than trying to remember a whole load of digits and numbers uh, to open up a tool that they want to use i think it's more important in these early stages you know where to find the tools in the first place so the other preferences you might want to set to make everything a little bit easier depending on your genre if you're a landscape photographer you might want to use some of those settings to block out the settings for portraits etc and vice versa if you're a portrait photographer you might not want the landscape functions to come up and i would certainly suggest you come to this side everything i've said to you today is all written down on these user guide all these four are covered if you click on any one of them it pretty much brings all of them up and it gives you a tutorial here and it gives you everything i've said to you here in writing if you need to double check what i've said and you want to look at it and you'll you find it easier to see it written down that's where you're going to find that so take a look at that have a look at this program if you haven't got it go try it, it costs you nothing and if you find it's useful to you then it's going to be a really excellent tool to have well it's not just one tool it's it's many tools in one and you can use that and get rid of certain other tools that you've had that you may have subscriptions to that you'll find that will save you money over the long term and allow you to do everything in one place how convenient is that to have all these tools in one spot to be able to do pretty much everything you need to do just using photoshop and topaz photo ai so why don't you give it a try see you next time on the Better Photography Channel. <laughs>